Hi everyone, Samantha back again um, today. Hope life is treating you all well. Um, and the weather is fine. It's not too bad here in the northwest of England today. So um, I thought today that we would look at making this beautiful little S link um, that you can use for all sorts of different things. So today we're going to have a look at how to make the little component and then how to attach um, it to beads and things like that for, this is obviously a necklace. How pretty is that? With little seed beads. You can use them for bracelets. And you can also use them for earrings if you like. I've made this little pretty pair of earrings here, you see. So you just literally um, link them together with jump rings. Um, to make a nice little pair of dangly earrings, if that's what you like. I like a bit of a dangle sometimes, so... Okay, so today we're going to have a look at making these little guys here. Really, really simple to make. So this is a really great beginner's project. Um, and then you'll be able to link them all together to make some beautiful chains for your pieces, for your focal pieces. Okay, so we'll have a look at what we need today. All right, so we'll just move these out of the way. So these little links um, are all made from one millimeter wire. Again, it's great to have one millimeter in your stash um, because we can make all sorts of things out of it, which we're going to do today. So to make these, you're going to need some one millimeter bare copper wire. Um, which I get from these guys here. You can get them from all sorts of different places. I'm not sponsored or anything, but I like I like these. Um, you're going to need 0 0.6 millimeter, and that's to make the linking wire wrapped bead sections in between. Um, I'm using 0 0.6 because um, it's just thin enough to work, but it also means that it's got um, a relatively good solidity to it. So it's a strong chain. Okay, so you're gonna need those. You're going to need some flush cutters, some chain nose pliers, as usual. You're going to need some round nose pliers or your bell making pliers, whichever one you decide you like the best and you're going to need some beads. So today I'm going to be using these little um, check fire polish. These are three millimeter. Uh, you can use pretty much any size you like, but I just thought that these would look really nice against the copper. Um, and you're going to need a basic ruler just so you can measure your lengths. Okay, so I'll clear the table here and we'll get started um, and we'll learn how to make these cute little swirls. Okay guys, we're back. So um, for each of these little swirls um, here, we're going to be making these, um, again from, like I say, one, one, millimeter, uh, one millimeter copper wire. And for each one of these, you're going to need a five centimeter length. Okay, so just just under two inches. I mean, you can use two inches, that's fine. Okay, so you need to measure out and cut five centimeters. What I like to do is cut out quite a few lengths all at the same time, and then I can just pick them up um, and not have to keep measuring them all the time. Okay, so, so there's your lengths of wire. Make sure that each, oops, that each side of it is flush cut, um, a nice straight edge, because it looks nicer um, in the center of the swirl if the, if they're flush cut. Okay, so make sure that they're all flush cut on each side. You're going to have to bring in your um, chain nose pliers and try and make your chain nose pliers um, as slender at the end as you can. Needle nose pliers would work brilliantly for this. So you take your wire, pop it to the very, very, very end 
retain those. Grasp it nice and firmly and with your thumb and your forefinger, manipulate the wire to start making a spiral. Okay. You can see there, nice and gently, so that you have the start of your spiral. When you get to this stage, just very lightly grasp your spiral, bend your wire around using your thumb and your forefinger. Obviously, if you're left-handed, just reverse what I'm doing here until the end of this wire here, the center of the spiral is just slightly offset onto an angle here. Okay, not straight, just sort of like an angle. I don't know if you can see what I mean there. Then you want to move the spiral to the opposite side and you want to be starting another spiral but you want to go in an opposite direction. So instead of the spiral being on the same side, you want the spiral to be on this side, okay? So that you're making a little spiral in opposite directions. So again, take your wire, pop it right at the very, very end and manipulate, manipulate it nice and gently so that you're starting to make another spiral. OK, pop it in between your pliers, start to manipulate that wire, bending it as you go, keep going, keep going, OK, and then straighten things out. And this is what we're left with. OK, so you've made your first little spiral. Really, really simple to make, guys. Um, and as you can see, if you make them by hand, they're never, ever too the same. And I really like that about handmade jewellery. Hand crafting is brilliant because you're not getting, um, you know, something that's off a conveyor belt. You're getting something that's completely individual and every single one of these that you make um, mostly will be completely different. And I really, really like that about handmade jewellery. It's um, unique and every single thing that you make is unique. And, and I think that's something to strive for. OK, so let's make another one. OK, so we have our flush cut ends. Come in right at the very end. If you grasp it nice and firmly, start making your spirals, as you can see. Grasp the end and just make a very nice, neat spiral. Turn it round and then make another spiral at the opposite side. So again, right at the end using the pads of your fingers and your thumb. Start making a spiral. Manipulate that wire, turning as you go. Turning as you go. And there we have another little spiral. OK, so keep going um, and make as many as you think you're going to need. I think um, for a necklace, this is about, I don't know, 45, 46 centimetres. Let's count them, shall we? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 of these will make around about... A 45 46 centimeter um, necklace so go ahead and make as many of these as you need I think for this bracelet let's have a look one two three four five six seven of these made a let's measure it for you get some dimensions going um, about a seven and a half one, two three four five, six, seven. okay so seven 
makes a seven and a half if you've got these three seed beads in between. So just just have a have a play around with you with the lengths of what you you know what you require. Um, and we'll meet back in a second when you've made a few more of these little guys. Okay, see you in a few. Hi guys. Okay, so by now hopefully you've made a few of your little swirls. Um, I've made a few here. We're going to make a. I think I'm going to make a bracelet with you right now. Um, making a necklace would obviously take too long. So I like to hammer um, my little swirls. You can leave them. Obviously you can leave them round, but I really like the way that they look when you've hammered them. You see it flattens them out a little bit. Okay, so if you wanted to do that, just come in with your little bench block. I'm using a tea towel here just to deaden some of the sound slightly. Um, pop your little component onto your block and come in with your chasing hammer. And literally just give it a tiny little hammer it doesn't have to be hugely hard or anything it's just basically just to flatten it off just slightly you can see here just gives it a tiny little bit of texture and just flattens it out and i think actually that it sits very nicely against the skin when it's when it's had a little bit of a hammer okay Let's just pop this out of the way so you've got your little components here all nicely hammered if you choose to do so um, and it's now that we're going to take these little tiny swirls I mean how cute are they and we're going to attach each one with a simple wire wrap bead link okay so let's go through that so for this part of the process you're going to need to bring in your 0.6 millimeter wire um, I like to cut the lengths off um, because having a tiny little waist doesn't actually bother me too much um, because I like to work off the spool. There are lots and lots of extremely talented uh, people out there that work off the spool and that's absolutely fine. Just find, you know, find what's comfortable for you. Okay, so let's go for this. So cut off a length. Um, I usually go for about so long because that's the length I like to work with. Let's have a look how much that is. Yeah, about three inches for me, but that's that's just my preference. OK, and we're coming with a few of our little beads. These are just simply um, three millimeter luster sky blue coral check fire polish beads which I think will look really nice against the copper. Okay, so let's get this piece of wire. We've done a tutorial previously on how to do um, a simple wire wrap bead link, um, but I'll just run through it again with you, just briefly. So you want to find around about a third of the way down your wire around about here and make a right angle like so if you come in with your round nose pliers and these hoops have to be a relatively decent size because what we're going to be doing is attaching them inside the um, hole that's left by the s i don't know if you can see that there so they don't want to be too small or else they won't fit um, around this two um, wire section here okay so I would either suggest the um, you probably don't actually want something as big as that so your round nose would probably be a good around about here okay again you can mark your round nose players to get consistent um, hoops every time okay so around about this kind of size so bend this shorter wire towards you rotate and bend the shorter wire away from you so you're left with a hoop around so big this is the tricky part is to get your component into that loop without um, 
distorting this hoop too much actually so this is the only part that gives me a little bit of a nightmare <laughs> so my best advice is to pop your hoop on sorry just pop your link onto the hoop like so when it gets to about this stage hold this and this wire together as best you can okay firmly and then just jiggle did you see how that popped in there okay and then you can sort of fiddle around with your wire whilst you hold the hoop like so my best advice is to use needle nose or very narrow chain nose for this because what you want to be doing is getting this little guy out of the way okay can you see that and just holding that firmly there so you come in with your second chain nose pliers or use your fingers whichever you, you prefer i do prefer to use two two sets of chain nose for this and wrap once twice and then three times i think three wraps for this style of link is perfect for me anyway okay so you can see here that we've got this guy that's now attached in the center with the hoop i hope you can see that okay okay and then you want to come in and remove this little bit of extra now obviously i let you know probably from my previous tutorials that i like to use nail clippers for this just because i think it gets in really really closely okay and if you find that you've got little bits of wire that's sticking out it should just come in and give it a smush so that it's not sticking out okay so that's a, that's the next part of the process done so here you can see we've got the little s link and it's been attached onto the hoop hope you can see that okay okay so i think i will choose to put on two beads in between each one. A lot of people in jewellery suggest that it should be odd numbers, um, ones or threes or fives, but I don't have a problem with just having the two little beads. <laughs> Mainly I think because um, it makes the bead link a very similar length to your little S link here, okay? So in order to close this little guy up, this hoop that we've just made here, this um, round loop, I want to make sure that we make it exactly the same on the other side. So on this part of the process, that loop here needs to be stood up like this, okay? Take your chain nose and hold it against the beads. Bend this wire downwards, like so. So we have this, okay? Then you come in again with your round nose pliers. Again, making them the same size. So make sure you have a mark on your round nose. Bend this towards you. And take your pliers, bend it away from you. So again, we're left with this sort of little cute bow tie type affair here. Take another one of your links, okay, using the hole in the centre, pop it on to your wire, holding both the wires with your thumb and your fingers here, give it a little gentle tug, and as you can see here, it's attached, okay. Come in with your needle nose, get this little guy out of the way to the side. Okay, and then take your other chain nose and do the second part of your wrap. One, two, and three. Take your excess wire off. Give that little wire there a smush so that it's not sticking out and being 
a naughty sharp little piece there okay so there we are that's your first beaded section linking your two little s links okay so we'll do one more so cut off your length of wire okay bend it to right angle round those bend towards you make a little hoop take the circular little swirl here pop it on Tug it slightly so that it's linked. Okay. Come in with your needle nose or a thin chain nose and wrap three times. So that's once, twice, three times. Okay. So that it's linked. Remove your excess wire and just tighten things up here so there's no sharp bits and pop in your little beads or your one big bead or whichever whatever beads you're using line up your loops in with your chain nose again and it away from you in with your round nose bend the wire towards you rotate your pliers and away from you okay so that we have this again so can you see each time we're linking the little s links with a wire wrap bead link here, okay? We get your next little S link, the little hole in the middle, pop that on, and very, very carefully hold on to the two wires, give it a little tug. Okay, pop him out of the way. And then you need to do the second part of your wrap to close things up two and three a little bit too much excess there sam but never mind <laughs> and then give it a smush okay and that's your next one linked. How pretty does that look? So I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera because you don't really want to be that bored looking at me doing all of these links. And then we'll come back when we've made enough for a bracelet. OK, so have fun with those and we'll meet back in a minute. See you in a few. OK, so you've got your beautiful necklace or your bracelet with your gorgeous little S links here. And now it's just time to put on a clasp so you're going to need a little clasp um, either one that you've made or one that you've purchased in a copper or whatever wire you're using and two jump rings okay so it's really simple you just want to put the jump ring through the center hole okay so just pop that through the hole and clasp on take your second chain nose and just give them a jiggle so it's on nice and tightly pop your second jump ring on just through the other side through the hole like so And then you just need to close this guy up. 
And that's it, all done. So I hope you have lots and lots and lots of fun making these. Aren't they gorgeous? Such a really cute little versatile link that you can use for all sorts of things. Necklaces, bracelets, use them for your earrings, that kind of thing. I hope you have a lot of fun making lots of lovely jewellery with these. Pop in the comments and let me know what you make. Um, and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.